Hi everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about a non-linear dimension reduction algorithm known as isomaps. So before jumping onto isomaps, uh, whenever I used to, uh, I wish to go for dimension reduction in any of my projects, I usually pick up PCA, principal component analysis, and I assume most of us do the same without giving a second thought. But recently I came to know that PCA has a big, big disadvantage. That is, uh, it assumes the variables. In the data set that we are going for dimension reduction should have linear relationship between them now uh, if you can think of real world examples this is quite rare like most of the cases you would be finding non-linear relationships between variables so dimension reduction for data sets where variable has uh, non-linear relationships among them is quite challenging and shouldn't be done using pca uh, some of you might be having this question in your head ki, what would happen if we would use uh, a linear dimension reduction algorithm like PCA over a non-linear dimension uh, data set. So if you remember PCA, the final output looks something like this, straight lines uh, perpendicular to each other. Now this imagine a non-linear data set, if we would be uh, representing such a data set with straight lines so what would be happening is uh, we would be losing out on a lot of information a very crucial topic that we uh, a couple of topics that we must know before moving ahead is geodesic distance and double cent uh, centering a matrix so first we'll move on to geodesic distance so this uh, is image uh, calculates the distance between the two points using Euclidean distance the pink line and the second image uh, the distance between the two points is calculated using a geodesic distance so as the difference is pretty evident, we can see that uh, geodesic distance is the path, uh, the path considered is only which is available. So like you can see there is uh, white space here, there is no path available, hence this area has been ignored. But in case of Euclidean distance, it is a straight line between the two points. Uh, whether a path is available or not, uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, the concept of geodesic distance is something that we would be using in isomaps also. Now, double centric a matrix by double centering uh, we mean that uh, uh, in a matrix the mean of any row and the mean of any column should be zero how double centering can be done uh, first of all we need to create matrix x left uh, in the left image and matrix y in the right image so you can see uh, matrix x consists of uh, the, mean, the mean of the column of that specific column in each cell and the matrix y consider of the mean of every row in in that particular cell uh, the row of that particular cell now double centering uh, would follow this particular formula so where z is our actual matrix x is the matrix uh, the mean uh, the column mean matrix and y is the uh, row mean matrix so the crucial topic that we should know uh, is dissimilarity matrix so uh, what do we mean by dissimilarity matrix it is a matrix uh, that consists of uh, the dissimilarity between any two points in the system. Now, this dissimilarity can be measured in multiple ways. Uh, the most prominent one being the distance between the two points, where uh, higher, bigger the distance, more dissimilar the points are, as uh, that has been done in the as shown in the below example, where we have six points, and like for example, uh, considering the dissimilarity between E and F is 77, represent uh, it it can be some distance or it can be something else but uh, the dissimilarity value for between a and b is 16 this means that a and b are more similar as compared to a and e if following distance as a dissimilarity matrix uh, it is said that isomap is a manifold learning algorithm so what is manifold so according to wikipedia manifold is a surface uh, which is of n dimension but when considering two close points uh, it should appear to be a euclidean space between those two points a euclidean space means a two or three dimensional space like x and y x if you remember so for example if we consider this point just look at the cursor uh, if you look at this point and this point uh, the space between these two should be similar to euclidean space but if we consider this point and a point farther away from it the space uh, goes uh, becomes an n-dimensional space. Uh, how using geodesic distance will help us preserve non-linearity of the data as compared to Euclidean distance. So, if you look at this non-linearly distributed uh, distributed data, 
uh, we can see that like consider point x1 and x2 uh, we can see that if we calculate the euclidean distance between the two uh, the distance would be quite small uh, like it can be the case that uh, eventually x1 uh, like uh, if there is a point x3 here uh, if we can follow my cursor it can be the case that the difference between uh, the distance between x1 and x3 and x1 and x2 in euclidean distance won't be that big a difference but eventually you can see that x2 is quite far away from x1 as uh, the distribution is following a spiral plot so how to preserve this uh, non-linearity so if you can see that if we follow the geodesic distance that is uh, following uh, the path which is available and not white spaces uh, we get a much larger distance as compared to a point here x3 so the geodesic distance between x1 and x3 would be considerably small as compared to x1 and x2 depicting that x2 is far far away from x1 so this is how geodesic distance helps us to preserve non-linearity which let's run through our algorithm uh, isomath so the first step involves calculating the geodesic distance so how is it calculated? Uh, there is no direct formula for it. So eventually what we will be doing is we will be breaking this calculation of a geodesic distance into two parts. First one is to run a KNN over the entire data set with an N, uh, pretty small like around 5 or 6. Why are we doing this? Uh, so if you can uh, again go back to the image, we can see that when we are considering N equals to 3 or 4, we know that uh, these points will be lying somewhere here very close to x1 which are actually close to x1 uh, now uh, we know that uh, if we go for if we go for an n uh, like bigger, greater than like say 20 or 30 it might be the case the point x2 will also get considered which is far away from it that is why we are trying to keep uh, n value uh, as small as possible once we are done that uh, what we will be doing is we will be creating an adjacency matrix adjacency or neighborhood matrix so neighborhood matrix means that uh, it is pretty similar to the dissimilarity matrix that we talked about but uh, in place of that uh, we will be putting a one between all those uh, points where we found uh, them to be the neighbors so for example assume point a has closest and neighbors as d and e so what we will be doing uh, instead of the distance getting put in up we will be putting up one uh, in that particular cell so uh, here and here we will be putting one and else all would be zero depicting that there is an edge that we are trying to create between uh, point A D and point A. Now, once we are done with an adjacency matrix uh, by following the shortest path algorithm, uh, we will be calculating the geodesic distance. So, if you can uh, like imagine uh, when as we have formed an adjacency matrix over, we are trying to form a graph out of this entire distribution where an edge exists between the uh, n closest neighbors, right? So, if uh, point X one has uh, these three points closest to it and we set n equals to 3 so uh, the edge will exist to only these three and they won't any uh, other edge that exists from x1 so eventually ultimately we have formed a graph now right for every point if we figure out uh, n closest neighbors we will having n edges uh, for each point uh, going to other points and in this form we will be forming a graph and eventually uh, to find uh, the distance shortest distance between uh, uh, two points in a graph we can go for any shortest uh, path algorithm like the just run. Uh, if we go with the shortest path algorithm we know that as we have uh, formed edges with the closest neighbors this will be following this entire spiral and eventually the distance that would get calculated as the shortest distance would be this spiral and not this one. Once we are able to form, uh, get a calculated geodesic distance between each point we will be forming a dissimilarity matrix using that uh, pretty easy as we talked about earlier. Uh, we will square the dissimilarity matrix and double center it. Double centering, as we discussed, uh, like the mean of all the rows and mean of all the columns would be zero. And then we will go for an eigen de uh, decomposition and choose k eigenvectors. This is pretty similar to what we do in PCA. Uh, 